Hey guys, Jeff Cheesehead Flipper here. So we're gonna head into one of my favorite little thrift stores here in my town. So St. Vincent de Paul's, I don't know if you have those in your area or not, but it's basically a church run thrift store. Now what I'm going to, their clothing prices are just absolutely ridiculously high. I mean like, yeah, no. Plus I hate doing clothing anyway, so it kinda works out for me. But the good news is the back area where the hard goods are, it's like 1990s garage sale prices. So come on, let's see what we can find. So the audio on this one got a little bit screwy. There was a lot of noise and a lot of our stuff going on and some places it just didn't sound right. So we're gonna do a little voiceover action, see how that works. I've never done it before, so hopefully it works. So come on, I'm gonna show you around the thrift store a little bit. Like I said before, this one, the clothing prices can be a little bit ridiculous. It's in my opinion now like some of the lower end like day-to-day -day stuff isn't too badly priced like if you are someone who needs this stuff you know some clothes for a decent price it's not that bad but anything really that us resellers would be interested in is sometimes a high price sometimes just absolutely crazy priced like here's a little liz claiborne i mean nothing that great 538 that's not horrible but you know that's torrid torrid is a pretty good brand if you don't know them they're a plus size brand 727 that's a little steep for what that was but here we go we're gonna see something kind of crazy here this is a purse i don't remember the brand i didn't get a good 3526 yeah 3526 a lot of these purses here 30 40 50 bucks even ones that would be something you'd get at you know like Target or Walmart will be 30 bucks. I just I don't get it. Now these are kind of interesting. They're uh they're new with tags. They're 578 and I didn't recognize the brand, I didn't look them up. I probably should have. Worksport, they can be okay, but you know, it's a 550. It was nothing I was really interested in. I usually don't really do clothing. Clothing. I'm kind of looking just to kind of show you guys an idea of what we have here for clothing. You know, 650. It's a local golf course jacket. Nothing too fancy. And nothing that would sell. Jansport. Those can be okay. An 838. That's more than I want to spend on a ba pretty basic looking Jansport. You know, just, yeah. I hate clothing, so it works out for me that the stuff is overpriced. Oh, like Urban Pipeline, that's like a Walmart brand, 430. That, that, you know, if you needed that for your personal use, that's not bad. They have a lot of this stuff. It's really, some of the lower end stuff for personal use is just fine. Old Navy, 398. Not bad, not bad. But for reselling, I, yeah. Old Navy's not a good brand, that great brand to resell, anyways. So, now uh, shoes. They are proud of their shoes. So, 13 bucks? Yeah. These guys here, 1885. <laughs> 1485 is for some Sonomas, however you pronounce that one. Yeah, Justin Murphy's on. Those ones may have been okay. I didn't look them up. They were a little bit more beat up than they looked like on the video. They want $25, $24.85 for them. Yeah. This shoe looks good, but the other one had a little bit of wear on it in a spot that just I didn't really like. And I don't want to tie 25 bucks up in a pair of shoes. They're kind of slow moving. But here we go. Here's one of the things I come to this place for often is media. Because, you know, single TV is $2. CDs, $1. I primarily am only looking for sealed stuff. So put the sealed stuff. These ones here weren't really worth it. And some of these guys here just weren't really worth it because the seasons they they do mark the seasons up a little bit. So as you can see about six fifty for most of them. It's just not going to be winners at all. Like that one you can get a little bit, but yeah, not enough. Again, seventh heaven six fifty. Yeah, a little bit of money there. Not great. Nip tuck. Probably make a little on that one. Community. You'd be losing money on that one. So. This is interesting. Previously viewed. I haven't seen these in a while. You can really notice these. They're hard to catch sometimes, but the plastic will be a little bit thicker. 
and the line look at that line it's really that sealed line is really 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 thick uh, that one almost fooled me so i was kind of glad it had that you know previously owned sticker on that because that was a good one now that this one's pretty good this one's also pretty good i picked up both of those this guy is a little bit and the cover didn't quite match so i didn't pick him up it wouldn't make that much i went over some cds these ones the ranks are horrible on these ones, but the money is good. Like I only do a hundred thousand in rank for new DVDs, so pretty much all these are gonna be FB, FEM. But the money is there. That one there I didn't pick up, so it wasn't very good. Now here's one thing to watch out for in these cases: these big cracks in them. You can't sell that as new. That just you can't do that. You'll get zero. This one looked good, looked promising at twenty bucks. Wow, but check out for this right here. That little mark, that a remainder mark means that you can't sell this new. And sometimes instead of having that little bit of little cut right here or something like that, also don't sell those as new. You will get in trouble. Here's some DVDs I also picked up. You know, not much. I'm probably paying two bucks each for them, so it's not that bad. Now these two here are pretty good. I'll come back to those in just a moment here. Now, with DVDs, I do 150,000 rank for new when I send them in. Blu-rays, they charge a little more for Blu-rays, but that one was still worth it. And actually, they keep me that one for two bucks anyway, so sometimes they do that. Now, these guys here, these multi ones that have more movies, more one movies in them, sometimes they do really, really well. The ranks are a little bit higher. Sometimes the money is there. This thing just made me laugh. Zombies! <laughs> yeah. I also went through all of like their their plush. I do some plush in time. Ooh, puppy. Ruff, 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 ruff. <laughs> this little coach bear, Land's End. He was a little bit rough. So at first I put him back, but I actually did come back for him. So if I remember correctly, he's only like 90 cents. I also came back for this little Tweety Bird for 60 cents. I mean, I recognize a brand for like, you know, under a dollar. You just I have a hard time passing those up. Plush moves kind of slow for me, but it does move, and when your buy cost is so low, it ain't, it's not too bad. You know, some of these I couldn't really tell what they were. Like this guy here, I couldn't tell what he was. I was starting to kind of feel the time crunch at this point, so I was starting to move a little bit faster. These dinosaurs, I probably should have picked them up, but the tags are cut off, so I didn't know what they were. So if I can't name something, how am I going to sell it? What I was going to do is kind of what I, I end up doing right here. I saw there was a second one. It kind of got me interested, but this one also didn't have a name on it. But I would have done like just this. I would bundle those two up together and sold them as a pair. But again, without having the tag on them, I, I don't know who they are. I ended up picking this one up too. Now, pretty much, if you're getting for under a dollar, anything Disney, Disney is just good. Not too large, so that's good. Because some plush can get a little bit space intensive so I did pick that one up now this guy here I probably should have picked him up I don't know why I didn't this leapfrog I don't know if maybe there was something about him I saw I didn't, didn't like or maybe it's a condition issue I don't remember at all for buck 70 leapfrog interactive toy not bad not bad at all now Raggedy Ann these things they sell okay I can't really see the tag there, but trust me, it was 60 cents. And it's a pretty small one, so uh, yep, I grabbed that one. I've sold those in the past, so I kind of know what's going on there. This guy here, I'm not really sure what he what he is. It's called Baby Bear. I thought this there's some gas station, like, I think it's down south, that has a very similar looking mascot. What was it? Oh, I can't remember what they're called now. You guys probably scream at the screen if you're from down south, but I thought that's what that was. I don't think it is. It might be. But, you know, anything that you can tie into a brand is what I'm looking for in plush. If you can tie it into, like, anything Disney, anything, like, a consumer quantity, you know, consumer good, some recognizable brand that's beyond it. I also picked this guy up here. It's Lego. I didn't look it up. Usually I look things up before I buy them. But I figured under a buck, it's Lego. It's a little bag. If it's not worth any money, my little man will like it. I always dig, kind of look behind things. 
because you never know what you're going to find hidden, especially in the toys. And the toy aisle here today was actually really picked over for what this place normally has. And it's just, there's usually a lot more toys, a lot better toys, but the prices are pretty darn good. I mean, like this guy here, a little beat up, but only buck seventy. If he was in good condition, I might have picked him up. This tractor here, it was a two thirty. I ended up, I did get him for my little man because he just he loves that stuff. So I just bought that for him. I didn't look it up because well, I'm not buying to resell. I'm buying that for my little man. Some of these games can do okay, but I'm only looking for ones that are sealed. And that's sealed, but that's like a local college playing cards. So I didn't bother with that one. Now for dolls, I'm usually looking like Monster High is about the only dolls I'm really looking for. And if they're priced right. This is Ray from Star Wars. 230 is a little bit more than usually they price things at, but I got him for my little man too. I mean he's gotta have some toys, right? Little man's gotta have toys. This was kinda interesting. It's a little pop, but the condition was horrible. And when I turned it over, I got hit by some really funky smell. So I just I put it back on the shelf. These guys are pretty cool, but that tiger, I'm just noticing that now. I should have probably looked him up. Some of those animal toys can be actually worth quite a bit of money. That's a hint. I missed it. The next time, you should look it up. I moved over to like their board games. I used to buy a lot of board games and part them out. Because I looked at their prices. They're like $1.20, $1.50, $1.70. They have really good prices on their used board games. So right now, I'm really only looking for new stuff. Because I have too much inventory to be mucking around with parting stuff out. So... I just kind of quickly glance at them. Oh, and these guys here. I thought I hit the jackpot when I saw the saw these. Not the plates, but these little collector things are like, you know, baseball cards. I just was like, oh, wow. I won't just grab them and put them in the cart. I looked them up, and I'm glad I did because, yeah, they're not really worth it. Not at all. So they also have pretty good prices at this location on books. Now, if I had more time, I probably would have been scanning a crap load of books here. So you look at that, two nine nine one oh nine. I mean, their book prices are pretty good. Now, it is hit quite often by scanners. This one is really interesting. It was brand new sealed, but as you can see, it just wasn't worth it. Even new, it wasn't worth it. You'd lose money on that one. Even brand new sealed. Hey, right, what's this guy? Dollar nine. Yeah. This guy, 209. 209. 109. 209. 149. So, you know, I can actually find some pretty good value on books at this location. They seem to have a lot of them. I, we have a fairly overly educated populace in my area, so books may be good, but it is scanned quite often. Now, electronics going on over here. This was actually not what was in the box. Something else is in there. I should have looked up this TV converter. Because some of these digital converters, also two of them here on the right, can surprisingly fetch a decent amount of money, even used. But one thing I love about electronics is it's easy to look things up. Like everything has a model and a, a brand. Let's look up the brand and that model number. Type in, look for solds. You know exactly what you have. There's no guessing. You can find all the specs on it, everything you want. But right now... So I have so much inventory, I'm not looking for anything that doesn't have everything with it. None of those had remotes, so I didn't even bother looking them up. You know, maybe I should have, but I have a little bit of a surplus of inventory. And this Magellan is interesting. Even in 2021, some GPSs can be worth quite a bit of money. Unfortunately, not this guy. Even some of them, the really old ones like this, some of those really old ones can still be worth a good amount of money. Not that guy, though. So, back for the electronics. If you ever find these little bins where, like, random small stuff goes, always dig through them. You wouldn't believe how many treasures I find stuck at the bottom of these. Like, I found brand new sealed, you know, iPods under in little buckets like this. I found uh, usually smaller items, but some of them are worth quite a bit. This guy was interesting. This is like some thing where you can like beam your remote to like a different TV, control it from like a different spot. And it, they sell okay, but we only had one. 
you need two for it to work, so I let it go. This fridge is excited for two fifty. I did end up picking that up. My parents' house has like a part of it that you just can't get Wi Fi in. So I'm gonna see if it works for them. If not, I might pay two fifty for it. If it doesn't work, I'm also gonna look up to see if it's worth anything. Maybe I can get my money back or sell it. If not, two fifty me try to fix a problem at my parents' house. Not bad. One of the things I love about thrifting. Now uh, here, this is the find of the entire trip. Yeah. An Oric XL. Look at that. 120 bucks plus shipping. <laughs> and that's a pre-owned one as well. Now this thing, I doesn't you don't see me putting the cart in the video here, but I did go back and, and after I filmed, looked it up, you know, just about dropped my phone, picked up, put it in the cart as fast as I could, looked a little closer at it. It's still new in there. It has never been removed from the box. Just the seal is cut. They looked into it, closed it. That's it. Now, cosmetics are also a neat, neat place to look. I'm always looking for like vintage, like perfumes and stuff. Some of them can command quite a bit of money. It's like discontinued and vintage perfumes. Not stuff here really sparked my interest. It's pretty much all newer stuff and, you know, not too bad, but. Not too good, I mean. Now, this clock here is kind of interesting. I kind of wish I had a spot for it because it's just cool. Thirty-five, what, thirty-five fifty? Man, that's pretty cool. I don't know how much it's worth. I didn't look it up. I'm not gonna deal in any furniture at all because I just don't have the space right now. Like I said, I have way too much inventory. Okay, here was he fifty bucks? I mean, I could put fifty bucks in the many other smaller items that I can make the same or more money on that probably faster as well because furniture can move for good price if it's the right stuff if you know your stuff but it can also be slow moving office supplies do not forget to look up office supplies even those small little things that were on the bottom there at first if they're sealed scan them you might be surprised I'm always looking for calculators especially a Texas Instrument calculator. So this one here is a little bit old. I did leave him behind. This one here, that's an okay one if you can get it for a buck to two bucks. But four fifty is pushing it on that one, especially without the case. This one's four fifty, which is not bad for it at that price. I mean, look at that used. I'll make nine fifty. And I, oh, this guy here, really good price, dollar seventy. This is a Casio. Casios aren't as much as in demand as the Texas Instrument ones, but they're still good. I picked up both of those. And they gave me for $1. seventy each, which I don't think they were supposed to, but they did. This guy's made me laugh. He was a badger. I'm in the badger state. The Wisconsin Badgers. So I filmed it. That's a big car. So yeah, I mean, it wasn't that bad of a day. I mean, I spent probably a little too much time in there. Second around time, because I'm about to go to dinner all with my dad tonight. But, you know... I found some okay stuff. There was a lot more busy for a Friday afternoon than I was expecting. Usually I come here on a weekday, like before five, is dead. So I didn't film everywhere or everything I wanted to because there's just a lot of people there. I mean, a lot of people there. We still found some deals, you know, of course, being on gated for, you know, media and, and on Amazon, that definitely helped. But, you know, there's a little bit of a risk selling, you know, new items on Amazon when you don't have an invoice or re or itemized receipt like with thrift thrift stores. The risk is going to be up to you if you want to do that or not. I've personally been doing it for several years. I haven't had really any issues with it. The only issue I ever had was one company just told me to take down my item. And I sent them a message back saying, hey, "Sure, no problem." And the listing, they're like, "Thanks." And you Back and forth conversation with them, I actually ended up getting a a wholesale account with them, and they're pretty good. I occasionally put orders in with them, so now we're good. And then I even asked them, "Okay, remember that thing that you know you had me take down? Now I have a wholesale account with you. I bought some stuff. Do you mind if I put that one back up?" They're like, "Sure, go ahead." <laughs> so it all worked out in the end with that one, but that's not always the case. I mean, some brands are just not very friendly. But yeah, that Orc. XL air filter we got that thing is new in box. I mean the box has been open, but the thing's never been taken out of the box That's gonna 
catch a pretty good price. And some of those DVDs did halfway decent, you know. Like, I'm gonna put, you know, I put some screen caps up, and, you know, a lot of them are gonna make, like, you know, between five to ten bucks, some fifteen bucks. That's pretty good, because the buy cost in most of those was two dollars and fifty, like, two dollars. So, yeah. Not that bad of a thrift run, you know. When I come here, you never know what you're gonna find. I did get a few things, you know, personal, too. Some of those I filmed, some I didn't. I spent a total of just under 50 bucks and everything. I think we're gonna do pretty good. You know, if I think of it, I might try to add up what I think we're gonna get for everything, and we'll go from there. So, if this is the end of the video, then you guys have a great day. Keep on listing, keep on selling. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.